there are many times when you'll be building or running a Node.js application that everything will technically be working, but it's just not working at the speed that it was on localhost or the speed that it used to. Sometimes you introduce a new feature and it slows down other features. And so there are many situations where you need to be able to diagnose where a performance problem or a speed problem is occurring. In this lecture, we're going to dive into how to use Node's performance hooks module in order to time the execution of your code to be able to pinpoint exactly where issues might be occurring. To do this, let's go ahead and require this performance hooks module. I'm gonna call it underscore performance. And it's going to be require perf hooks with an underscore between them dot performance. Now all this performance data that we're going to add to one of our handlers isn't something that just should be logged out all the time. We want to log it conditionally only under certain node debug settings. So let's go ahead and include the utilities module var util equals require util and then define debug, which we'll use instead of console logging, as util.debuglog, but this time the magic phrase will be performance. So the only way you'll see the console logging that we're doing related to tracking performance will be if you start the application with node underscore debug equals performance and then node index.js. Let's go ahead and move down to where the session tokens are getting created. So I'm going to look for handlers, tokens, post. This is a fairly straightforward route. It takes in a payload, needs to read the user associated with that payload, create a hashed password to compare the password that has been sent from the user to the one that we have on file. Then it needs to create a token and persist it to disk, then return it to users. Now, speed has not really been an issue with this route, but let's say that it is, and we're not sure why this is occurring. We're gonna walk through how to augment this handler so that we can benchmark the code execution at different points in time as this code goes through these different steps. What that's going to look like is we're going to create things called performance marks. And you can think of performance marks as points in time or points in code execution that have a specific label on them. We are going to then, after we put in all of our labels, do performance measuring. And performance measuring allows you to measure the code execution between different marks that you have set up earlier. Lastly, we're going to log out the results of all those measurements. So let's go ahead and add these performance marks. To do so, it's fairly straightforward. We just want to call underscore performance, which is the name that we gave to this module, dot mark, and then give it a name. So in this case, this name is going to be entered function. It's fine for these to be human readable. In fact, it gives you an advantage when you're creating your reports. You don't have to remember what point X, Y, Z, A, B, C was. You just remembered, I want to measure from where the function was entered to some other point. So that's the first performance mark. The next one we want to do is just below where the inputs have been validated, and we will call this inputs validated. Next, let's add a performance mark just before this user's data gets read. So we're going to call this performance mark beginning user lookup. When this function calls back, let's add a performance mark saying user lookup complete. Now let's move down to where the password hashing is happening because that could be taking a significant amount of time that could be the thing that is slowing down our system. So let's put a performance mark right before they hash the password saying beginning password hashing. And after the password hashing function returns saying password hashing complete. Now, another thing that could be slowing things down is when we're creating this random string. And so let's put in a performance mark just before we do that saying creating data for the token and then we want to measure everything it's doing right here so we're going to put in our next performance mark 
just before we store the token, saying beginning storing token. And then another one after the data create function returns or calls back saying storing token complete. Now at this point, we don't really care about whether there is an error, whether we're calling back a 200 or a 500 to the user. We just want to start measuring between these different points and then logging out all those measurements. So I want to first gather all the measurements and let's create six of them. For this, we're going to call performance.measure. Then we need to pass it three things. We need to pass it the name of this new measurement, which can be something of our own creation, and then the name of two marks that we want to measure the timing between. So in this first case, let's call this first measurement beginning to end. And we're going to measure between this point entered function and this point storing token complete so beginning to end is entered function and storing token complete let's create another measurement that has to do with validating user input to figure that out we want to measure between where the user entered the function so entered function will still be the start point but the endpoint is going to be that the inputs have been validated. So inputs validated. Let's create another one called user lookup. And this is going to measure the time it takes us to actually go fetch the user's data from the file system. So we're going to start it with beginning user lookup. And we're going to end it with user lookup complete. Remember that this performance mark and this performance mark. Let's create another measurement for password hashing. And we are going to have the start point be beginning password hashing and the end point be password hashing complete. That is this point and this point. Next, let's create a measurement for token data creation. So we're actually going to measure between creating data for token and beginning storing token. You can probably guess what our last measurement is going to be. It is going to be for token storing. So we're going to measure between these last two points, beginning storing token and storing token complete. Now all of our measurements exist and they are still gathered up within this performance module. This is not going to automatically log anything to the console at this point. All we've done is create marks and then create measurements. In order to get this data out of here, we need to actually manually log it out. The way you do that, the way you log out all the measurements, is first create the measurements array by calling underscore performance dot get entries by type and the type is measure and this is just the syntax very particular to the performance module at this point after you call get entries by type measure you have an array of measurements so we want to call measurements for each and then cycle through each measurement for us, rather than log it out, we're going to use this debug that we created up here. We're actually going to put these measurements out in yellow. So I'm going to go to our server and copy where we used colored writing before, paste that in here. I'm going to change the code from 36 to 33, which is going to make it yellow. And rather than having this string come out, I want the string that comes out to be measurement.name followed by a space and then measurement dot duration. So this is just going to log out the name of the measurement, the duration of the measurement, one after another. And rather than calling console.log, it's going to be called as debug. 
Okay, now let's start this app up. Remember, we're not going to see any of these performance metrics getting logged if we don't start it with the performance debug. So we're going to call node debug equals performance and then node index.js. Let's go over to Postman. I'm going to send a request to API slash tokens post. Got a 200 back. Look back here and we see our performance benchmarks logged out. Validating user input took this long. Beginning to end took that long. User lookup, password hashing, token data creation, token storing. And these are measured in milliseconds. Since it's a debug log, you have the name of the debug flag printed and then the process ID, but really the information that we're looking for is what's coming out in yellow. So as you can see, using performance marks and performance measurements gives you a really robust way to analyze exactly what is going on with your code. The metrics, when they come out of the measurement array, won't necessarily be in the order that you originally specified them. We measured beginning to end first, but here beginning to end is second. So you don't want to read this linearly. You want to keep track of the meaning of each one of these things and look at them separately. In our case, we can see that the thing that took the longest out of any given step, besides beginning to end, is token storing. Persisting that new token data to disk took us 1.3 milliseconds, whereas reading out the user data from the disk only took half a millisecond. So if there is something that we're going to optimize here for performance, if that 1.3 milliseconds was unacceptable to us, then we would start optimizing the token storing portion and start experimenting with other ways to store that data faster. So now we can kill this app and move on to the next lecture.